Hello, uh, we come back to our weekly Gems of the Alshech. I think this is number four, maybe five. And it's in this week's Parsha, which is the Parsha of Kedoshim. So let's turn our Alshech and see what we have to say. Um, the Sedra begins, for those who've got the art scroll Chumash, always a good place to have a look. It says, V'yadabar Hashem el Moshe Lemar. And Hashem speaks to Moshe and he says, Kedoshim you, you shall be holy. Ki Kodashini Hashem. Because I am Lord, I am your God, I'm holy. Um, full stop. So you should be holy. Now there's a million things the Alshik has to say here, but let me just give you the, the the headline. Obviously, by definition, what does it mean to be holy? It's a thing Rashi talks about, Ramban, different commentators. The Alshik says something very interesting. The thing that makes a person holy is the mitzvahs, and we can see that because what do we say when we do a mitzvah? A sherki de shana you are making me holy by this mitzvah. So the doing of the 613 mitzvahs in the Torah for a Jew, or in a very similar sense, for a non-Jewish person to keep the, the, the commandments in the Torah which apply to him or her, produces the same outcome. A person becomes holy. Jews have no uh, monopoly in holiness. But the way that you do that is by following the, the Torah's prescription. Okay, let's keep that as a simple idea. But then let's lead that in to the next uh, uh, Possibly the next verse in the Seder of Kadoshi. Oh, for those of you who like chapters, this is in uh, Leviticus in English, isn't it? But Yikra, and it's 19, 19 uh, verse 1 and 2 we're looking at today. Dabra ben Israel, a call of Israel, speak to the entire Jewish people, but Martalim, and say to them, Kadoshi to you, this is the one we did, Ki Kadoshi Hashem, and the next verse strangely says, Ish imoi the Oviv Tibo, a person should fear his mother and his father. And then it says, "Es Shabbosai Tishmoro, you should keep my Shabbat, my Sabbath." Ani Hashem Lekech, I'm the Lord your God. Interesting. So we've already established that the way that a person um, becomes holy and therefore gets to heaven um, is by keeping the mitzvahs, by keeping the Torah's commandments for a Jewish person or a non-Jewish person. That would be the, a pathway to get to heaven. Fine. Um, the way the, the, the next verse then goes on and moves away from this way of getting to heaven, or it seems to, and then says that you got to fear your mother and your father, and then says, boom, and keep Shabbos, keep the Jewish Sabbath. What's the connection between the two? So the Alshak says something very interesting. Um, obviously, you have to have a, as we're talking about, a way to get to heaven. You have to have a certain respect for the people who brought you into this world because only by coming into this world are you able to get to heaven. As the Talmud famously says, this world is a bit like the rehearsal room, um, or rather where you're tested, perhaps like a, a university or a college, university or college of life, where you'll learn, try to apply these ideas, and as a consequence, then you get to go to heaven. You can only get there by being here first. The people who brought you into this world is your mother and your father. Right, so that's why it would have to it would have to emphasize that. And then it says, uh, keep Shabbos. The idea being that if your parents turn around and tell you not to keep Shabbos, not to keep the Jewish Sabbath, then you're supposed to turn around and say, mm, sorry, not really, because the verse quite, A quite seriously tells us this is all about getting to heaven, and I've got to do the mitzvah of fearing my mother and my father, but it doesn't trump what God wants, he says, we've got to keep Shabbos. So if your mother and father tell you to break Shabbos, you've got to say, sorry, um, I can't do that. God comes first. That's why the verse continue, it con concludes, Ani Hashem Lekechem. But the question, obviously, we ask is, or should be asked, and the al certainly asks it, why that mitzvah? Why not say any other mitzvah? That it could say, um, instead of the mitzvah of honouring your mother and your father, it should say, and if they tell you to break Shabbos, say no, that's why it says Shabbos, then it could say, on your mother and your father, and then another mitzvah, don't steal, or don't murder. And the same thing would apply. If your mother and your father tell you to murder, or your mother and your father tell you to steal, you say, I'm sorry. And the and the it says. Uh, that trumps everything. So the Asha gives an interesting answer here. Uh, we know there are three uh, partners in the creation of a human being. The mother, the father, and God. The mother and the father produce the physical. The egg combines with the father's seed and starts to subdivide, etc. And there's various parts of the body which Kabbalistically come from the father, they come from the mother. And they were the ones who bring you into this world and only by being here can you go to heaven. Fine. 
We might think, therefore, um, there are three partners. Oh, God produces the soul. Well, two, let's be democratic about this, two outweighs one, does it not? So I might try and think that, well, <laughs> mother and father against God, right? Three partners. No, so I want to tell you that, first of all, um, they brought you the they brought you into the world. They gave you a body, but who gave them the body? The very source of all bodies goes back to the, the Garden of Eden. God made them. So even the body that, that, they, that they used to produce your body, they can't really lay claim to. It was God who did that. So that's would be answer number one. Answer number two, uh, maybe I'll read a little bit of the Alshur to you, just so we uh, know that's what we're doing together. Oitshu is the second answer. And that's this, let's go carry this idea a little bit further back. Yeah. So God created human beings, but before he created human beings, he created the world. And before he created the world, there was just God. That's why the Kabbalistic would say that God created the world before he created angels. So you mustn't think that there is any partner, there was no partner no other force that God had to combine with or use or utilize in order to create the world. Him alone. Indeed, he enters into a partnership with a mother and a father who produced the physical and him producing the spiritual to produce you or me. But he doesn't have to. That's a choice. God did everything, created everything alone. So his choice, what he wants, trumps everything else. I remember, actually, in London many years ago, there was a young lady, and a very young lady, I think just bas mitzvah, so 12 years of age, she decided that everything she was learning for her bas mitzvah lessons with the, the rabbi's wife of the shul, which they attended, an orthodox shul, although the family weren't religious, uh, they weren't observant, the rules that they didn't keep were orthodox rules, however. Um, but this girl just really got into this in a big way, and she just wanted to keep the Jewish Sabbath. Her father and mother went completely crazy and bonkers and furious. She didn't want to drive to shul on Shabbos. She wanted to walk to shul on Shabbos. Um, the father literally was grabbing his daughter and pulling her out of the house and stuffing her into the back of the car in order to get her to drive to shul on Shabbos. Um, this is not a good uh, tactic in parenting, by the way. And rather unsurprisingly, all they did was reinforce the girl's desires and maybe made it even stronger than it could possibly have been before, and she ended up married to a rabbi and became, becoming a rebison in her own right. Because ultimately, even though the parents, you do, we all have an obligation to give honour to the mother and the father. Notice, incidentally, as the Alshik points out, the mother first. Honour your, uh, fear your mother and then your father, because the mother was the, the mother, the, the source of our physical existence comes from the mother first. It's ignited by the father, but it was there first from the mother. So she, you have to give her ultimate credit um, in the physical sense. Uh, but basically, the choices of the parents cannot trump the choices of Hashem because they can't say you're our child because we, the parents, are children of Hashem and he tells us all what to do. So we should all look very good childs.